Hey guys, I hope you're all doing good. My name is Sarang and I'm going to be the primary presenter for today's workshop. So what are we going to be doing today? Very simple, right? So aerodynamic simulation needs, why do we need them? What is it that engineers and reputed companies are trying to understand and optimize? We'll, we'll all try and understand that. And then we'll talk about some background work, like you know, how this has been done, how, how this has been done 20 years ago, how things are moving towards in the current day. We'll talk about design methodology. Here, we will primarily focus on how computational fluid dynamics is being used in the design process. Then one thing that we typically don't do is a practical session. For example, yesterday we had a similar session on internal combustion engine simulation, where the focus was on IC engine simulation. There, uh, I did show the IC engine model, but I really did not talk about how it was set up a lot. So today I'm going to be you know, providing a little bit more information on how a commercial software can be used to set up an aerodynamic simulation in a very similar manner to say how an engineer in General Electric or General Motors would do. Apologies for that, my mobile is silent. And then obviously we'll be doing some post-processing post and this time it's going to be interactive post-processing. And I'll show you what are some of the results that engineers look at, especially you know, while designing say F1 cars, right? Since I, I did notice that two of them are interested in external aerodynamics, I thought I would talk about that. So we'll start with a very simple clean slide, right? So aerodynamic simulations, why do we need them? When you're trying to simulate, you can determine how the fluid flow is, right? That is what all of you guys are saying. But the important question that you need to understand is, well, but why is CFD used for that? Why can't you directly visualize you know, the fluid flow? Isn't that more accurate? Why do we need, why, need, why, why do we need to simulate them, right? That is the important question that you need to ask. So for example, this right here, uh, for example, this right here is what you call as a um, NASA generic conventional model truck. So let me just uh, put some arrows here, just give me a second. So for example, this right here, um, Kenil Patel, I'm an aerodynamist in the Formula Electric team at VIT University. Okay, that's pretty cool, Kenil. Welcome to the workshop. Okay, so this right here is a GCM truck. So GCM stands for Generic Conventional Model Truck, right? So this is basically a CAD model, right? So we have a CAD model here and I'll be showing you more pictures later. Now, the reason why people do analysis on this is, is because a lot of experimental data is available. So people have actually measured the, the, the things that you guys are talking about, like drag coefficient uh, and then any lateral movements, which, is, uh, which you can basically measure by putting a yaw on the truck, right? And they have also measured more data in terms of transient pressure, meaning when fluid is flowing over an object, right, it exerts a particular pressure, correct? And this, pre and from this pressure, you can calculate your drag force. But this pressure is changing as a function of time. So that is what you call as a transient data. So transient means something that is changing with time. So people have already done experiments where they are able to capture time accurate data of pressure velocity on top of the truck, right? So with me, which means I can actually calculate what the drag coefficient is, right? Very, very accurately. So now let's talk about the same question again. So if I can accurately measure my drag coefficient through experiments, then why do we need aerodynamic simulations? Would that be more accurate than the real life experiments? Most likely not. But why do we need the simulations? Can anyone answer that question? So why do we need aerodynamic simulations? Well, it is not because it's more predictive. It's not because it can actually give you things that experiments cannot. It's primarily a very cost effective tool. It does not help you in better understanding of flow patterns. It does, it does provide you a visual aid, but you can never be sure that your CFD simulation is 100% accurate. The primary purpose is you see, for example, if you want to reduce a drag coefficient and you have a concept, right? say that you have a concept, meaning, okay, if I basically reduce my flow separation point, I can reduce the drag coefficient. You have this theoretical knowledge that you learned from fluid mechanics. You're going to apply that by maybe using a spoiler or you're basically creating, you're basically adding this vortex generator on top of the truck so that 
um, you know, separation point is going to be delayed. You can test these strategies quite easily if you just have a good computer, right? And you don't need a wind tunnel, right? Or else you need a wind tunnel to do the entire process. So the reason why you need CFD is it's a cost effective tool at the end of the day. If you're building a wind tunnel, each and every test is going to cost around 20 to $30,000. This is just a single point. Typically when you run aerodynamic simulations, you run 50 to 60 iterations per design change. Again, I'm talking about industry standard here. I'm not talking about something that you would do for say your FSA teams or Supra teams, right? And you need larger computers also, right? So bottom line, aerodynamic simulation is a cheaper tool and it will help you reduce your testing time. That's it. But what is what you need to be careful is for the exact same reason, many people think that it is very easy to do aerodynamic simulations and they try to do it and they assume that what results they are getting is very, very correct. Uh, not to pick on you guys, right? But 95%, I can say this with 95% of confidence that your simulations are wrong. Why? Just by, just by looking at the computer configuration, I can say that your external aerodynamic simulations are most likely incorrect. Meaning you will still get the results, but the drag coefficient that you think that you're getting is most likely off. It can be quite off. I'm talking about an error, error percentage of 25 or more, right? If you have 25% error on something, then, you know, that's, that's as good as completely wrong. Right? So why, why does this happen? Right? I mean, and from your, from your view, from your viewpoint, Rushikesh and Deepak, you guys might be thinking that, well, I'm actually using ANSYS. How can I get wrong answers? Uh, what about drag curves? Uh, well, if you're talking about drag coefficient, that should be even more wrong. Uh, getting the lift is typically easy. For example, getting the downforce is easy, but getting the drag coefficient is much harder. And I, again, I'll explain the actual analytical reasons for my statements. Like why am I saying that your simulation's wrong? Uh, I'll be explaining that. Mm -hmm.